So the point with this example is to use direct comparison to test the convergence of this series. And if I just think about some things qualitatively for a second, it can help to guide the way that this goes. If I think about the harmonic series 1 over n, I know that that's divergent. But this series that we're looking at has a better chance of converging than that because as n gets large, the 1 over n in the parentheses here gets close to 0. So that's forcing the numerator to get close to 0 instead of staying at 1. So I'm hopeful that this thing converges. And my first thought for how this might happen is that sine of 1 over n might actually be less than 1 over n, which would make this whole thing less than 1 over n squared. That means the terms of this series are less than those of a convergent p-series. So my long-term goal here is, is to hopefully compare to 1 over n squared, which is only going to work if we can show that sine of 1 over n is less than 1 over n. And that's the really difficult thing about this problem. This goes back to a geometric construction that normally you see at the beginning of Calculus 1. So I'm going to look at a little section of the unit circle. Okay, there's my unit circle. I labeled the radius as having a length of 1. And if I look at an angle here that I'll call x, then, and this is how the sine function was originally defined, the y-coordinate of that point on the unit circle corresponding to this angle x is the sine of x. All right, but then I can apply an old formula from geometry, s equals r theta, and talk about the length of this arc right here. So s equals r theta. So the length of that arc is going to be radius times the angle, which was just x. In other words, it's just x. Now, because I have this curved arc compared to this straight line going down to the x-axis, I know the straight line is going to be a shorter distance. And I can conclude that the sine of x is less than x. All right, so all, all I have to do now to, to get what I'm after is just replace x with 1 over n. And hopefully you agree that 1 over n is fairly small. As n gets larger and larger, this thing is just a reasonably small number. All right, good. Now it's time to make my formal argument. So I'm going to say sine 1 over n over n is less than 1 over n squared, because sine 1 over n is less than 1 over n. And then I'll say the sum of 1 over n squared, n goes from 1 to infinity, converges. If you like, my argument there is that it's a p-series with p equals 2. And with every single term in sine 1 over n, less than every single term in a convergent series, it's guaranteed to converge by direct comparison.